and I'm going to load you into the grocery store. You are all set to go. The real limiting factor has been an inability to overcome what we would call the locomotion problem. When you have a traditional virtual reality application, you have a mismatch between visual information and sensory information. That causes this nauseous feeling. That's where we started to really do the research trying to combine different systems together, like the omnidirectional treadmill with the virtual reality application. What the omnidirectional treadmill allows you to do is to turn and walk in any direction. Some people think of it as a treadmill on a thousand treadmills. It really adds a level of immersiveness to the virtual reality experience and it eliminates that locomotion problem or that VR sickness. Changes in what we would consider instrumental activities of daily living actually precede the clinical diagnosis of neurological disease by five to seven years. Going to the grocery store, driving a car, using public transportation, paying bills. That's a motor and a cognitive component together. When we were developing the Cleveland Clinic virtual reality shopping task, we really tried to replicate what someone did in a real grocery situation. For example, as you're navigating the store, you're avoiding other people in the store, you have to look at the list. So how much time are they spending looking at the list? How many times do they look at the list over the course of finding those five objects? Healthy young adults and older adults without neurological disease can activate the list and continue to walk. Whereas individuals with Parkinson's, they activate the list and they stop. That suggests they have some problems in dual tasking. We think this could be a very important early disease marker or even to track the progression of the disease. If we can diagnose earlier, then really provides a better opportunity for changing the course of the disease.